You may be seated. I'd like for us to share in a testimony. I'd like for John Taylor to come at this time and share a testimony. Uh, and we know that in our lives, we need the Lord. And I think he will express how God has uh, led and guided his life in many ways. God is faithful. It's on. Get it close. Okay. It's, uh, it, it seems like all the scriptures I've got today are uh, ha have already been used either in the Sunday school class or in the church service. But Psalm 91, verses 1 and 2 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. I was born in China to missionary parents, and this was a country soon to be engulfed by a war with Japan, which would become part of World War II. Already the Chinese nationalists and communists were fighting a civil war. When I was six, my brother, my two sisters, and I were sent off to a boarding school, but before this, since we were separated from our parents, or would be separated from our parents, my mother taught us the 91st Psalm, and to help us remember it, she set it to music. I would sing it to you now, but Kathy might want to recruit me for the choir. <laughs> In 1940, the Japanese already controlled the city where our school was located, while my parents' mission was in the free part of China. We would not see our parents again for five and a half years, but we didn't know that at that time. We were then just foreigners in an occupied city. Then came the unprovoked attack on Pearl Harbor, and suddenly we became the enemy of the Japanese in a part of a, of a country controlled by them while my parents were in free China with a war going on between us. Many of you may be aware of the atrocities committed by the Japanese on their prisoners. My mother was frantic. My older sister was a teenager, and mother thought of all that could happen to her. One day, unable to cope, she cried out to God, who gave her a verse from Matthew 6, 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. But the verse came to her a little differently. Look after the things dear to God, and God will look after the things that are dear to you. Mother took this as a promise from, from God and was able to continue her Bible school work throughout the war. Who was dear to God but the Chinese that she was working with? And who was dear to her but her children? Back at school, first the Japanese restricted our ability to leave the school compound. Then they confiscated the school property and put us in a concentration camp across the city. After 10 months, there, we were moved to a concentration camp in Weishan, where we were kept for the last two years of the war with all the foreign nationals from North China. We didn't have much to eat, but what we had wasn't good, such as ground up eggshells, which I usually spat out, but at least we were not mistreated. Later in the war, we kept hearing rumors that the war was nearing an end. One August morning, as I was in music class, I don't know how all this music got into me, in the church, we heard the roar of a low-flying plane. We rushed out into the adjacent field and saw a beautiful B-24 with a white star on its wings. It's called the Armored Angel. 
on its third pass overhead, the bomb bay opened up and seven parachutists jumped out on the fields outside the camp. The war was over. And we were free. We rushed out the front gate, 1,400 strong past the guards who just let us go. We found our rescuers, seven members of the U.S. Army Air Corps, and carried them back into camp on our shoulders. During the next few weeks, B-29s flew over from Okinawa regularly and bombed us with food. Then on 9-11-45, the four Taylor children and two others boarded a C-47 carrying parachutes headed to the air base in Xi'an. My father had arranged this through the U.S. Embassy in Chongqing without ever bothering to tell my mother. After a night of celebration at the airfield, we were put on a train under the care of a Chinese Christian and taken to Guizhou, still 16 miles from where my parents were living and working. It was raining and the roads were just muddy, rutted paths through the fields. We started out on a horse cart, but it was too slow. So we jumped out and started walking and running the last 16 miles. This was a part of China we had never seen before. We knew little Chinese and there were no road signs. We had to ask at every fork in the road, Feng Xiang Zainali, which is to say, which, which way to Feng Xiang? I probably only made it a mile before I could go no further. My older sister, Kathleen, and my brother, James, took turns trying to carry me, but that didn't work so well. So they threw me on another horse cart that was going by. <laughs> we arrived at Feng Xiang just at dark, and a Bible school student took us to the mission compound where my parents were starting a faculty meeting. He announced, Heidzelila, the children have arrived. My mother, not being aware of the arrangements, asked, whose children? At, at this point, we, we burst in and, and canceled the faculty meeting. <laughs> it had been five and a half years since we had seen each other. My five-year-old brother had never met any of his siblings, but God was faithful. Amen. Mother and dad had looked after the Chinese. The, pe the people dear to God and God had looked after the things dear to them, their four children. God was faithful and he remains faithful today. Amen. Praise God. God bless you.